This is the most fun, most exciting new thing in needlework, and it's called needle felting. This is as simple as whirl and twirl and smush. You can purchase a, oh, they're anywhere between $200 and $500 machine that just does this, or you can use the clover system, which is this tool and this brush. I like the dense brush because it's never going to deteriorate like a piece of foam, which some systems use. I really think the brush is great. I love the clover tool because it's spring-loaded. You'll see that in a minute. Plus, you can lock it and unlock it, so there's a safety feature there. It also has a guard around the needles. The needles are barbed. That means there's little indentations on these needles. And there's five needles loaded in here. To change the needles, it's as simple as unscrewing the bottom, dropping out this little disc, and then you can replace the needles. It comes with fine needles and there are also heavy needles. My experience to date is the only time I want to use the heavy needles is if I'm needle felting on denim. If you wanted to do real precise work, you could of course take out as many needles as you wanted using just as few needles as you want. So, my needles are in there. So how I did this sweatshirt was, I really just put it on, located my breast points because I knew I wouldn't want to make a whirl and twirl right there. I had stabilized the center front. I knew that I was going to bind it with silk ribbon and I had this wonderful silk roving. Here's a new colorway, this nice lime green. So I just want to show you how it works. You want to use some material that's fibrous. Just think of it this way. Anything that you stick down into, if it's not going to totally destroy it, it will work for needle felting. This uh, it just feels heavenly. But let's say that I was going to make a design on this sweatshirt. You can use it as wide or narrow as you want. But, okay, here I go. I'm just going to whirl it and then maybe let it twist on itself, twirl it, and when I get something I like the looks of, then you smush. If you're mad at somebody, you can take out all kinds of aggression. This brush is designed to be the exact depth of what the needles need to go into. Let's say that I wanted to fan this out right in here and then maybe whirl it at the end. Now the machine that does this is doing the exact same thing. I really think even if I had a machine I would still do the design work with a hand tool such as this because it's easier to hold it up, stand, it, stand back away from it and look to see what you're getting. So I'm going right through the sweatshirting, right through this stuff, And you see how it comes through the back side? That's what's supposed to happen. It's interlocking these fibers with this fiber by virtue of those barbed or indented needles. People look at it and they just can't figure out how is that put on there? Well, this is how it's put on there. It's just really lots of fun. And I think it's a really luscious, luscious embellishment. Washability? Well, it's definitely not as washable as some embellishments would be, but you can always mush it on some more. What I say for is washing is eucalyn wool wash. It's a very gentle, no rinse, no agitate, soak it in this stuff, wash. The main deal is you don't want to agitate this. You don't want it to go like this and just get all mushed up in the washing process. So you're just going to put one of these, either the lavender or the plain, in a sink of water, immerse this, just let it rest, pull it out, maybe gently roll it in a towel and hang it up to dry. And if it starts to fur up a little bit, just go back and mush it back down. It's that simple. It's not an embellishment for a sweatshirt that I would wear every day, but it certainly makes a glamorous, glamorous jacket. And again, I highly recommend that you try it.